gone through a blank canvas. I'm going to take you through Citizen M hotels. Uh, what Citizen M did was start with a clean ca canvas. They said, you know, we're, we're going to build a hotel company that's going to rely on, you know, distribution, direct bookings, not relying on OTAs. We're going to build one product room type, not, you know, multiple product room types because that's inefficient in the building. We're going to build these hotels using modular construction. We're going to empower our associates, which we'll call ambassadors. Uh, we're going to empower guests to be brand ambassadors. Uh, we're going to, you know, lower the full-time employee ratio uh, to operate these hotels by making the ambassadors multidimensional or multi-rolled, i.e. the front desk can also be trained in being a barista for the coffee bar, which transforms in the evening to a mixology bar to be, to be bartenders. So it's really empowering. They said, you know, let's get rid of back of house uh, space that is unrequired. For example, you know, washing machines, dryers, et cetera, for, to do the sheets, et cetera. Let's just, you know, um, give that to a third party facility management company to take care of just like office buildings and all that does. We'll, we'll create a structure around that. So in any case, it, it really redefined. They started with technology. Uh, each room had its own CPU built in so it can gauge, you know, everything from, you know, uh, temperature, water pressure, you know, guest preferences, et cetera. Um, again, and now they've sort of kept on innovating on their, on their technology, uh, you know, keyless entry and all sorts of other good stuff that they've sort of implemented. They were the first people to create these communal lobby spaces as living rooms and design them that way. And then all the other brands started. They were the first ones to have, you know, check-in kiosks. Uh, so people can just go right in and out. Uh, they don't have to deal with a front desk. Uh, so a lot of good, great innovation uh, and a really successful hotel company. So they said, who is our customer segment? Well, for the M in Citizen M, it's the mobile citizen of the world, right? It's just a mobile citizen. Usually hotels are segmented into leisure and transient and business and group and corporate and uh, FIT, free independent traveler transient, all sorts of segmentations. They said, no, it's a mobile citizen. Uh, we got to reach this mobile citizen through online distribution only, direct bookings, no OTAs. These people have various attributes of travel and they blend it all together. They come for work and culture and food and, you know, having fun and exploring and arts and culture, right? So they looked at the psychographic characteristics and then they, they broke the segmentation a little bit down into how are these people booking, right? Direct bookings, GDS, and third-party OTA. So it's affordable luxury for the people, luxury and budget together. These includes values like delightful surprises, humanistic, no hidden cost, location, and lifestyle, right? Their customer segments, main segment was mobile citizen of the world. Additional segments was cultural, exploring, partying, business show, shopping, i.e. the psychographic characteristics. Also the, the, the channels of distribution, uh, segmentation on, on direct bookings through Citizen M website, GDS, the global distribution system, and then third-party OTAs, and limiting the third-party OTAs. Sales channels were 100% online, 100% online, no travel agents. Direct website, they achieved 52%, that's even higher now. Few third-party online channels, so they have negotiating power. GDS uh, created a Citizen eShop, uh, Citizen M products. Uh, again, they communicated heavily with Facebook, Twitter, personal email, a one to 10 customer satisfaction. So upon checkout, all you had to do is, you know, green smiley face for 10, you know, one red, you know, frowning face for, for uh, you know, one, and then you just, you know, tap it and they're gone. So you get more feedback from guests at a holistic level. They built relationships through Facebook and Twitter. Um, they did a program called Test Sleepers to bring in influencers. And well, this was 10 years ago uh, or 12 years ago now and to sort of stay at the hotel so the operations team can you know work out on, on any inefficiencies uh they had a personalized follow-up by the email their rfid tag key was turned into a, a luggage tag you can write your name that a quirky sort of saying on it one of my favorites is uh you know uh, travel light but always carry a big smile again they empowered their ambassadors to interact with the guest instead of being very dry and sort of uh scripted and uh you know, the revenue structure paid, you know, was 85% room bookings, prepaid, flexible, or no change, right? They, they tiered it 
food and beverage was about 12% through Canteen M, which was that sort of uh, transform transforming space of a, of a barista and a, and a mixology bar. And uh, early, and then they said, some guests want late checkout, early check-in. This let's just charge a small fee. They charge a little fee for credit card commission because they knew that that was a cost um, that a lot of you know, people didn't build into their, their pricing. They had, you know, pre-buy pre breakfast, and they were the first ones to do grab and go, right? To, to sort of grab something and go uh, for breakfast and other items. And then they increased revenue per square meter, than, unlike any other hotel. And so their key resources really was their human capital management team, acquisition team, operational team of ambassadors, local manufacturer for the modular rooms. Um, and then they had capital, right? KRC Capital, ABP Pension Fund of, of, of the Netherlands. Um, Again, effective use of square meters, creativity, culture, extreme specialization, centralized organization, you know, no more of what did you need a controller at every hotel or, or accounting functions, let's, let's uh, centralize it. Key activities was hotel development and investments in order to build a successful operational hotel brand with high degree of communication with guests and employees. They built key partnership with Philips for their TV and their remote that controlled the whole room. Concrete, again, a design shop that you know, did modular and looked at yacht designs and effective use of smaller spaces, uh, luxury yachts. Uh, Vitro is a furniture company out of Sweden to do all their living room inspired concepts in the, in the public areas and, and in the rooms. Uh, and a few others, again, facility management company, right? First hotels that outsource housekeeping. Um, all that led to a cost structure that reduced investment costs, reduced labor expense, reduced cost of distribution, and reduced non-revenue generating space, back of house, front of house, common area, roof. And they achieved a 50% gross operating profit at the unit level. So that's sort of, the, in a nutshell, um, uh, the business model in words. Now I'm going to...